It's no secret that wildlife thrives in the lands between. Many animals, both passive and aggressive, can be found on our journey. Some seem just like average everyday fauna, but others have been distorted by this land without death, just as its more human inhabitants have. For whatever reason, the world of Elden Ring is home to giant, monstrous wildlife, and it doesn't take kindly to being disturbed. While the most famous of these giant animals is arguably the rune bears, there's enough information and speculation surrounding them to warrant their own video. So in order to give the spotlight to some of these other large terrors, we'll save them for another time. Today, we're going to explore the giant land octopuses, the giant ants, and the giant bats, digging into what we can learn about these horrifying creatures and how they fit into the ecosystem of the lands between. Welcome to the Elden Lore series, where we walk you through the lore and backgrounds of the enemies, characters, and anything else you can think of while exploring Elden Ring. Whether you're a longtime viewer or just stumbled onto this video, thank you for joining us. If you end up enjoying our content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Every sub helps us grow the incredible community we've been lucky enough to cultivate. We also have a Discord server where you can talk with other FromSoft fans about your favorite aspects of the Soulsborne series. Whether you subscribe or not, thanks again for spending some time with us, and feel free to check out the Elden Lore playlist, where we've covered almost 100 topics. With that said, let's get back to these monstrosities. If you visit one of the beaches across the lands between, you've likely met a giant land octopus. These horrifying amalgamations of writhing tentacles seem to hide their actual bodies by wrapping themselves up in their own limbs. They attack our tarnish using the tentacles protruding from the front of their body, and if we get in close enough, they'll also bite at us with their sharp beak. Getting in close seems to be the only effective way of dealing with them, as their tough, rubbery exterior is resistant to all forms of damage, and if we'd like to slay one efficiently, we need to risk meeting them up close. These octopuses are one of the only instances of an animal in the lands between that can heal itself. Once we've damaged them enough, they'll eat one of their own tentacles in order to regain their health, and that limb will eventually grow back. While these creatures are terrifying, we can learn precious little about them. The octopus head tells us it is a land octopus whelp worn directly on the head has a lingering warmth reminiscent of human skin. Those who can withstand the smell will find its organic elasticity excellent for negating attacks. If nothing else, we now know that these things smell terrible. The most interesting and horrific information we're presented with about the giant land octopus is learned upon obtaining an item, the land octopus ovary. This is a puffy, milky, white ovary of a land octopus, and it tells us, Land octopuses eat humans in order to bear young, and theirs is the blood that runs through these ovaries. With this information in mind, we can assume all of the smaller land octopuses are male, while all of the giant variations are female. When looking at the giant land octopus, you can see their eggs growing from behind their tentacles. So if they're sustaining life, that means they must be the female of the species. We can see other examples of this with giant sea life in the lands between when looking at the giant crayfish, which can be found carting along fresh eggs under their tails. This creates a distinction between the male and female of both species. It seems as though in order for these creatures to live on and continue adding to their family tree, they must eat human beings. For whatever reason, the blood of other creatures won't do when it comes to the reproductive system of the giant land octopus. This means that every land octopus we face was at one point a human being, or at least they wouldn't exist without taking their nutrition from the blood of its mother's dinner of human flesh. Remember, when facing these creatures, stay vigilant. If you get too close or slip up, you may become its next meal and feed the next generation of land octopuses. The giant bats are a mystery in the lands between, as we have no way of knowing how or why your run-of-the-mill bat would grow so substantially in size 
and become so aggressive. But it's spooky season, so you're kidding yourself if you think I'm not going to talk about bats. These enemies can be encountered very early in our journey when traveling through Limgrave at night. And while they don't provide much of a challenge, they could overwhelm you in the early game if you're not careful, as they tend to come in groups of three or more. They attack with long sweeps of their claws, but are also capable of grabbing you and biting your throat, likely a call out to vampire bats. They're also able to use a ranged sound-based attack to fight you from a distance, clearly an advanced form of echolocation that they've learned to weaponize. The most interesting thing about the giant bats is their relationship to another enemy in Elden Ring, the chanting winged dames. These creatures are reminiscent of harpies, but also share many of the characteristics of the giant bats. The big difference here is that the dames take on the appearance of an old human woman. They're encountered in a few different areas of the lands between, but are perhaps best known for their perches across the ruin-strewn precipice. In this area, we can hear them sing their somber song in Latin, which the community has actually translated into English. Alas, that land once blessed now has diminished. We destined to be mothers now become tarnished. We have lamented and we have shed tears, but no one consoles us. Golden one, at whom were you angry? There are some variations of these lyrics based on who's translating them, such as Reddit user The Flightless Penguin, stating the lyrics to be but now have become disfigured, instead of now become tarnished, which may change the meaning a bit. The word tarnished seems too coincidental if that is the correct translation, and would imply that the dames are saying they have been tarnished, but I don't believe this would mean they are literal tarnished. In this case, the implication is certainly that they've been disfigured in some way, perhaps turned into these monstrosities by the Golden One, who at this point, could have been a number of different characters, such as Marika, Radagon, Godwin, or perhaps even the Elden Beast itself. It's not clear why the bats flock to these women. Perhaps they see them as a part of their race, maybe a female variation. But we believe the likely answer is that they simply enjoy their song of lament. Lastly, we wanted to talk about the giant ants found throughout the underground of the Lands Between. These creatures come in four different variations. Worker ants, winged ants, shield-headed ants, and bloated ants. There are very few items associated with the ants, and they don't give any information on how they've grown to this enormous size. Formic rock is described as a rock formed from a solidified ant venom, highly acidic, found near the Ainsil River and other places where giant ants live. We can actually be attacked with this acid ourselves when fighting the giant ants, as they can spray it in our direction. Another item which calls out these enemies is the ant spur rapier, which is the spur of a giant ant which has been fashioned into a rapier. The blade drips with scarlet rot. Scarlet rot is an old legend, of which Malay Murray of the Shaded Castle was a private believer. And indeed, he eventually found his own personal goddess. What's most puzzling about this weapon is it seems to associate ant spurs with scarlet rot, which makes little sense as the ants themselves are susceptible to rot. Lastly, we have the ant skull plate, which is a huge head of one of the giant ants which inhabit the two underground rivers, used without modification as a shield. Excels at repelling enemy attacks. Giant ants are venomous creatures, granting a boost to immunity when wielding the shield. Again, this specifies the ants are venomous, not rotten. So perhaps the ants spur rapier is simply dipped in rot by the Moray family, as the ants don't seem to have any association with the scarlet rot. The bloated ants drop what I believe to be the most interesting item we can gather from these enormous insects, a Newman's rune. This rune is exceedingly rare, and its description tells us the Newmans are said to have come from outside the lands between, and are in fact of the same stock as Queen Marika herself. Many believe that the Nox are the descendants of the Newman. So if these queen ants have a Newman's rune sitting in their egg sac, then perhaps these enemies 
can trace their lineage all the way back to when the Numen first arrived in the Lands Between, well before Queen Marika was ever even a player on the larger stage of the world. The last thing we wanted to discuss about these creatures is their relationship with the Nox. Knowing that the giant ants have roamed these underground tunnels at the same time the Numen reached the Lands Between, you would assume that they may have cultivated some kind of symbiotic relationship with their possible descendants, the Nox. After all, the Nox can be seen riding giant ants and will take them into battle against you. However, thanks to the tireless work of Zuli the Witch, we know this relationship is actually much more contentious than it seems. The ants being ridden by the Nox are actually being controlled with some kind of magic. This can be seen when looking at their eyes, which have some kind of purple hue, signifying how they are not in control of their own actions. If you can manage to dismount the rider from their steed, the light will fade, and the giant ant will attack them viciously. It seems the ants cannot be tamed, and the Nox care little for the consent of their underground neighbors. These tunnels belong to the ants, and if you aren't careful, it's likely you'll never make your way out of these harrowing depths. Thank you for joining us for this look at some of the giant creatures of the Lands Between. Were there any other large beasts you wanted us to take a look at? Why did the giant land octopus crawl its way out of the ocean? Are they escaping something much more terrifying just below the surface? What caused the giant bats to grow to these ridiculous sizes? Just how old are the giant ants, and have they always been so massive? Let us know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss out on any of our lore dives. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.